God, I missed uh, Walt. I talked to him yesterday. I just want to publicly congratulate him for our cross country championship. Championships aren't easy to win, so I uh, decided that's a good way to start out this week, hopefully, for all our sports. But, um, you know, I'm excited about the Champions Classic. I mean, there's no question that some injuries have made it. Uh, you know, a little more difficult in some ways, but at, at the same time, um, what a great way to start the season. For us, uh, for our players, for our university program, for everything. Being this event, as I said, is great for all of us. Uh, when you look at the top four teams in the AP poll, um, I think it's happened one time, uh, according to my stack guys back in 2008. They had four teams in there, and that was at the final four. And uh, Champions Classic had the top four teams in the coaches' poll in 17. And um, so it's not something that happens very often. Uh, we've got uh, whether anybody's deserving of being there or not. I talked to, to Cal, and he's uh, questioning uh, all the fact that he's young. I told him he's the oldest team I've seen Kentucky have in 10 years. They, start uh, supposedly maybe two freshmen, uh, a fifth year senior, and uh, two second year seniors, because if you're in Kentucky more than a year, you're classified as a senior, not a sophomore. On us, we had a great week of practice. Um, about three of the four days were really good. Uh, Cash and Xavier know what's expected of them, and Aaron is constantly progressing it's the other guys that are going to be important. You know, I think those guys are going to know what it takes. But for all the talk about experience, uh, we have some. But we also, you know, are going to start one freshman probably. We could have started two freshmen maybe. We're going to be playing some sophomores that didn't have a lot of experience. And hopefully Kyle Arns, he's been progressing in practice, um, will definitely be able to play. Uh, but uh, we're going to rely on our own set of freshmen ourselves. As far as scouting Kentucky, and you know, the beat goes on. Very talented team filled with a lot of McDonald's All Americans. Um, but the experience from last year with Higgins and Montgomery, um, two good players, very good players. Uh, I think. Uh, I think it's. Orly kid is um, is supposed to be their most improved player from last year. Uh, he is the best shooter on the team. Uh, I think uh, in Higgins it'll be an interesting matchup because uh, even though he scored points and he has assists, they say he's the best defensive player uh, maybe in the whole league. Montgomery is you know strong kid. He started nine of the last eleven games last year. So that's a lot of experience for Kentucky. And Sestina, uh, who you watch him on film, has had a body transformation since when we played him when he was at Bucknell. But he played very good in both their openers. He's a guy that's a stretch four. He can shoot the ball. Um, and I recruited, of course, Tyrese Maxey, uh, who I think is one of the best guards that I had seen. He's, Steady, he's solid, he can do a lot of things. He's got size, he's got strength. He can shoot the ball and yet he's athletic. Uh, Khalil Whitney, if he starts, he was the other guy. Um, other freshman who they had in the starting lineup on their last game. And uh, he's a kid who is very, very athletic. Maybe the best athlete, kind of like an Aaron Harris for us. Um, so they've got enough weapons that they definitely uh, don't need anybody to feel sorry for them. And I don't think we need anybody feeling sorry for us. It's just the adjustments we make now without Josh and uh, how fast we pick up on that. But Coach, in the back right here, actually two questions. First of all is do you like jumping into the fire like this against a team like Kentucky or would you prefer sort of a, a lead up into something like this? You know, if Josh was here, I think I'd like it because then I think the advantage goes to us a little bit uh, this early in the year. Usually when you play in this event, it uh, seems like Kentucky and Duke for sure have had a lot of young guys, although they're both getting a lot older than they were 
for the past three or four years. Um, you know, I talked to John about it the other day. Um, even though I love the fact that it started out college basketball, now everybody's jumped on and everybody's starting the same night. For one year, it was like nine, we were like the only thing that started it. Um, it would be nice to have a couple games in your belt to see where you are, especially in our situation this year. And in fairness, Kentucky and Dukes most years. But at the same time, there's just something about getting ready for this where you can kind of talk about it all summer, you know, and everybody knows that not only are you playing Kentucky, not only is it one against two, whether either one of us are there right now, but maybe more importantly for the kids, go to New York, play in Madison Square Garden, where everybody says is the mecca of, of basketball. So, uh, you know what, I think it's all great, I really do. And the second part is, how much stock do you take in the results of this game? Is it one of those things where you, 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 you take a lot, or is it, hey, it's still early in the season, there's, there's a lot to go here? Well, if we win, I'll take a lot of stock, and if we lose, I'll take no stock, uh, personally. But either way, I'll take no stock. I mean, all it's going to do, the stock I'll take in it is it's going to help give us an idea of where we are and who's gotten a little better, who needs a lot more work, all those kind of things. Um, I've always said it's, it's great because if you think you're better than you are, you usually get it knocked out of you. Uh, it's great because if you're questioning your team and you play good, you feel a little better. If you play bad, you already know what some of your problems are, and now you get a chance to maybe not only tell the players, but they get a chance to have found out for themselves. And that usually, so it's, to me, it's all good. The whole thing's good. It's just, uh, I don't know if it's ever good for your fan base because if somebody, two teams are going to lose, and four fan bases are going to think those teams should never lose. So then we have to deal with that. And if you win, you know, you'll get anointed something that really doesn't matter in March and April anyway. So um, I just think it's good. It's good for college basketball. It's good for our program. And it's good for my players. So it's a good deal. Tom, uh, last year the only, you were the only one of the four to make it to the Final Four, and yet you lost in that Champions Classic game. Does that kind of give you perspective that as excited as you are, this isn't going to make or break the season? Yeah, early? you know, I, I think we all have perspective all. All the coaches, you know, last year, um, Kentucky got to the Elite Eight and really should have beat Auburn, in my opinion. And uh, they got beat, what, 118 to 20? I guess it wasn't quite that bad, but I think Duke pummeled them last year. And uh, so, I, I, you know, I've been in it long enough where I have perspective on that. And um, I'm not I'm not looking at it. A win makes you a Final Four team or a loss makes you a you know, a sixth place in the league team. It just, it gives you a good barometer where you are. It gives you something to play for. And uh, what I'm most uh, worried about with my team now that we got a little younger here in the last couple of weeks is, um, are we gonna get better every day? And that's what's really gonna determine our season. So I'm kind of a little two-part thing with, with two different guys that, that you need to kind of figure out what's going on with, first of all, with Joey, have you heard anything yet? And what is the expectation on that? The expectation is um, we are appealing the appeal, which again, it sounds crazy because uh, everybody just should it be over with uh, as much as you guys would because your readers want to know. I would because I got to answer to you guys to answer to your readers. So um, he will not play tomorrow. I know that for a fact and I'm hoping that by the end of this week, we'll have our final answer one way or another. I, I think there's been some parts of the appeal. There's some things that have happened nationwide recently, just yesterday, you know, kicked in Kentucky at Washington. I mean, it's, you know, well, where is that? And the second part of that was with Kyle. Um, and I know that the ankle was, was a little bit of an issue. How do you plan to manage him both with that right now and then with the back moving forward. Yeah, you know what? What I'm I'm going to try to manage it, but it isn't going to be a load management thing where we uh, I'm going to manage it by talking to Kyle. You know how he feels and how he plays, and but he, he God, he had a hell of a summer. I mean, he was really, really, really good. And if you saw the accident or the injury, the way it happened, it was running out of bounds. I mean, 
nobody can hear him, you know. I mean, we have weird injuries, you know. He runs out of bounds. Um, the other day, Kithy was running down the court, and, and kind of, uh, Julius kind of half fell and came up with his elbow and hit him in the nose, broke his nose, you know. I wish all those injuries would happen to me, not my players, and I'd feel a little better, but I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna sit there and worry uh, it is what it is. I've watched football go through so many injuries in the last two years. Uh, I've watched other teams go through injuries. Um, I'm not. I'm not practicing different. I mean, we're going to use our our head on what we got to do, but I'm really going to use the player and the trainers on what I do. Tom, two part. First of all, you think the same starting lineup that you had against Albion, or is there going to be some change with Kit and Rocket? Uh, no, with. Kithier. Oh, Kithier. No, I expect Rocket for sure to start. The Kithier one, I think he'll start. But, um, you know, we have looked at both uh, Marcus and uh, Malik. And I think all those guys will be rotating in there. But, uh, yeah, we're starting Rocket. And, uh, I mean, I've been really pleased with how he's done. I've been really pleased with how he's practiced. And yet, at the same time, you know, he had the least amount of time here because he got here six weeks later. But I've really enjoyed um, his competitiveness uh, and how fast he's picked things up. So that's a positive. It's just uh, you look at him being a first-year guy and Josh being a fourth-year starter, and uh, yet I need him to do the same thing. I need him to score and I need him to be one of our best defensive players because that's what Josh was. So that's what we're looking for. Secondly, every year we've sat here and you've come alone not having more practice. This year you got a lot more. So yeah. now that you've done it, which do you prefer, the old way where you didn't get as much or this way where you just beat each other up? <laughs> well, you know what's happened, Hondo, is they've done double duty on this one because they gave us two more hours a week in the summer. And then they, uh, I don't know, we start on Labor Day or was it a few days after? It seems like we've been practicing as long or longer than football. Um, I mean, it's been good. It's been good. We've got some things done. We did, I wouldn't say we load management, we team management that a little bit. We went two days off a day, two days. You know, we tried to spread it out a little bit and get those days in. But I mean, I, for the most part, I think our guys are, they're not stale. They're feeling good about, you know, what we got to do. It just, it is a long season. I, I guess I, I've always known it's a long season, but I think for some reason this year you look at it, and maybe because we started so early, you said, do we end earlier? You know, like, it's like starting school earlier. Do you end earlier? The answer is no, you don't. So um, basketball is getting to be a six-month season of actual practice and games, uh, where at one time it was more of a five- or four-and-a-half-month season. As you prepare to go into Madison Square Garden tomorrow, just kind of curious as to how your younger guys, how they've been approaching practice this week, and if they've asked you any things in regards to what it's like or what it's going to be like to play in a venue like that, and if you're worried that they're going to get in there and their eyes are going to pop. <coughs> you know what? I hope I get in there and their eyes pop. I really do. I, I think the problem we have right now is these kids have so many things with their AU and you know, I had to tell them yesterday, this is a privilege, this is an experience, this is a memory of a lifetime. I went around, Dane, did you ever play Madison Square? No. DJ, did you ever play there? No. Doug, did you ever play there? No. You know, uh, I asked my one GA from Central Michigan, and I said, Chris, you ever? No. You know, I said, it is a happening, it is still one of the places that every, every pro says is one of their favorite arenas. But sometimes I think these guys just, you know, everything goes, so I hope they are nervous. I really do, and I hope they are excited. Um, that's that's the privilege you get of playing a schedule like this, or you could have gone to a million schools that never play these kind of games. So um, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I don't know the answer. Uh, you know, I don't know what, what Rocket will do. You know, a, a month ago he thought he'd be the backup to Josh and somebody else, and, and now he's going to start, you know, three weeks later. And uh, I think he's tough enough to handle it. But what he'll do, 
Um, I don't know. But John's got a couple of those kind of guys too. You know, what are they going to do? Who knows? Uh, I just hope they don't do what those two freshmen. I hope his kids don't do what the two freshmen did last year at Kansas. They made more threes than they made the, the next month. And I hope my guys maybe uh, make some threes this time. Hey, Tom, um, Kentucky with their length on defense and the pressure in the half court, is that something that you're eager to see how your guys, the new backcourt and so forth? How they yeah, you know, I think Cassius is really ready for that. And then yet they say Higgins is, this is his claim to fame, you know, that he's a very good defensive player. And I'm sure that's the challenge he'll make. But I think Cassius added strength is really going to make a difference now. And uh, Rocket is quick enough to do some things that Foster's going to have to to see how he handles that kind of pressure. But, you know, a lot of games you go into thinking there's gonna be all kinds of pressure and it subsides down, you know, like like they say in all sports, the first five minutes is when you get the jitters out, everybody's playing it a certain way, and then usually it settles down into what both teams have done most of their careers. And I think for John and I, I don't think that'll change much. I think